The project that I work on is called the N11 Badger Project and it was instigated by the Department of Agriculture and National Parks and Wildlife Service. The objective was to study the impact of a road upgrade along the N11 on the social structure and ranging behaviour of badgers in that area. Now, that's her microchip. So the reason we are interested in researching badgers is because they have been implicated in the spread of bovine tuberculosis and they act as a wildlife reservoir for the disease. To date, the methods for controlling tuberculosis in cattle have involved testing of cattle and biosecurity measures, but also culling of badgers when they are involved in a herd breakdown. Now, badgers are, of course, a protected species, so culling is not a sustainable long-term solution. So we're moving towards vaccination as a control method. So she's going to get her BCG now. In order to implement any control method successfully, you need to understand as much as possible about the ecology and the movement of the animals involved in the disease. So as you can see, in the cage here, we have a badger that has been trapped overnight, enticed into the cage using peanuts, which they love. So once the badger has been anaesthetised, we then do a general health check to see how they're doing. We will treat any wounds that they have, we will remove parasites, and then importantly, we take blood samples and pharyngeal swabs to test for TB. One of the most important things that we do is actually vaccinate our badgers. And if they are a suitable candidate, we apply a GPS tracking collar to that badger. And then once it wakes up, it goes about its business and the data starts to roll in. Badgers are organised into social groups, which are generally family members, and they range in a particular territory. They overlap with one another by about 70%, and they share boundaries with their neighbouring social groups. Now, there isn't often movement between social groups. They tend to stick to their own ranges. What we have discovered is that there are two alternative ranging strategies among the male badgers in our study area. Those that stay within their territory boundaries and those that range far beyond their territory boundaries. And we have called these individuals super rangers. This type of ranging behaviour is previously unrecognised and it really needs to be incorporated into epidemiological modelling of disease dynamics. So super rangers may in fact be super spreaders and if that is the case we need to find a way to identify those individuals and target those individuals with vaccines. One of the best things about this project was the fact that it was a collaboration between the Department of Agriculture, National Parks and Wildlife Service and then ourselves. And of course, working with the landowners and farmers down in Wicklow was fantastic as well. We vaccinated all of the badgers in that area and that really got the buy-in of the farmers who were actually living in the landscape and at potential risk from TB outbreaks. So they were really happy to have us there and it's been a really beneficial experience, I think, for everyone involved, including the badgers.